cut any hole between any two points on Earth. It's a 90 minute trip. Whoa. Oh, wait a minute. First, we were going the diameter yes. of the Earth. Yes. Okay. And that's from point to point on opposite sides. Opposite sides. But if we go up this circle and then I cut a hole. Yeah. You're not going through the center. I'm just going straight across. Straight across. But it's a much shorter distance. Yes, it is. Why would it take the same amount of time? They're not falling towards the center of the Earth. So the gravitational difference? A, yes. The force accelerating you is less. Get out! And it's less by exactly the right amount to cancel how much shorter the distance is. Come on. You stop it right now. Get out of here! gravitational physics, fun. That is amazing! Yeah. To make sense of this whole magic tunnel to the Earth thing, we just need three key ingredients from physics. First up is the big one, Newton's universal law of gravity, which says that any two masses attract each other with a force that goes with the product of their masses and is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. The further you get, the weaker the force becomes. Which brings us to fact number two, one of Newton's most beautiful and underrated results, the shell theorem. Imagine you are inside a hollow spherical shell of a uniform mass. What kind of gravitational pull would you feel? The answer is zero. Not just tiny, literally zero. No matter where you are inside the shell, the gravitational pull from all directions cancels out perfectly. Why? Because gravity gets weaker with distance, but there is more mass in parts of the shell which are further away. The extra mass and the weaker pull exactly balance out. It's a stunning result, all thanks to symmetry. Okay, but now imagine being inside a solid sphere like the Earth. You can think of the Earth as a bunch of concentric spherical shells stacked up together. According to the shell theorem, all the shells outside your radius, they cancel out. They don't affect you. Only the mass beneath you, the inner sphere of radius R, contributes to the gravitational pull on you. So if the Earth has a uniform density, rho, which is the Earth's mass, divided by the Earth's entire volume, we can now find the mass enclosed within this radius R to be the density times the volume of the sphere. And then Newton's law gives us the gravitational force acting on you at this distance r. This force grows linearly with the distance from the center. So if you fall towards center of the earth, gravity does not stay constant. It gets weaker linearly. And when you reach the center, it's zero. Fact number three, springs. Here's the deal. The more you stretch a spring, or the more you compress them, the harder they push back. This isn't just springy intuition, it's rather Hooke's law, F equals minus Kx. The force is always directed back towards the equilibrium point and is proportional to how far you are from it. Stretch it more, it pulls back harder. Push it in, it pushes back. If you've got a force like that, you've got simple harmonic motion. Going back and forth, in a sinusoidal motion. Using F equals ma and plugging in Hooke's law, it gives us the acceleration being negative omega squared times x, where omega is lovingly called the angular frequency of the oscillation. Why? Because the period of oscillation, the time period, is given by 2 pi over omega. Okay, so what do springs have to do with tunnels through the Earth? Well, everything. Remember how we showed you that gravity inside the Earth drops off linearly with distance from the center? That means if you dig a frictionless tunnel to the diameter of a perfectly uniform Earth and drop a ball into it, the gravitational force on the ball will increase linearly the farther you are from the center, always pointing back towards the center. That's exactly the behavior of a spring. And the motion of the ball? Simple harmonic. Just like a mass bouncing on a spring, except this time, for a spring, you've got the entire planet gently pulling you back. 
This gravitational force, F of R, is exactly a restoring force. A perfect match for Hooke's law with an angular frequency omega given by the square root of gm over r cube. Plug in the Earth's mass, the Earth's radius, and we find a time period of oscillation of about 84 and a half minutes. That's where the figure Tyson was quoting came from. So far, so good. That explains Tyson's claim, but only if the tunnel goes through the center of the Earth. But what about all tunnels? What if you dig a tunnel between two random points, say from New York to Delhi in India? Still no friction, still no vertical motion, just a smooth frictionless fall along a slanted tunnel. Turns out, it still takes 42 minutes. Let's find out why. Now remember, the ball is falling along the tunnel, but gravity is still pulling it towards the center of the Earth, along the radial direction. That's the key idea. At any point along the tunnel, the gravitational force is still trying to drag the object towards the center. But since the object is stuck inside the straight tunnel, only the component of the force along that direction actually moves it. To get the force along the tunnel, we multiply it by the sine of this angle theta. From basic trig, we also know that x equals r sine theta. And that's exactly the same form we saw before. A restoring force proportional to the displacement along the direction of motion. Which means this ball falling through any tunnel, not just the diametric one, still undergoes simple harmonic motion with the same one-way time of 42 meters. But here is something that really blew my mind when I first saw this. This 42 minute time isn't just some quirky tunnel trick. It's actually connected to how satellites orbit the Earth. Imagine a satellite in a perfect circular orbit just above the Earth's surface, as low as can possibly go. That's what we call a low Earth orbit. Force law tells us that gravity in this case will act as the required centripetal force, giving us mv squared over r will be equal to gmm over r squared, which gives us the orbital speed of about square root gm over r and therefore the orbital time, just the circumference of the Earth divided by the speed, and this comes out to be the same 84 minutes that we got earlier. A coincidence, you ask? I say not. It's the beautiful connection between simple harmonic oscillation and circular motion. If you take the satellite's circular orbit and look at it from the side, say you just watch its shadow moving back and forth along the diameter, what you actually see is just simple harmonic motion. It's a cosine curve. It speeds up in the middle, slows down at the edges, just like the ball in the tunnel, because circular motion, when projected onto a line, is simple harmonic motion. Now, of course, in the real world, the Earth isn't perfectly uniform, it's not a sphere, and there is definitely air, rock, and molten iron in the way. But even so, the idea that gravity can mimic a spring, that a tunnel and an orbit can share the same rhythm, that's the kind of physics that makes you fall in love with the universe all over again. And sometimes, the answer isn't just beautiful, it's universal. So next time, someone says, you can't get there from here, tell them, actually, all I need is a tunnel and 42 minutes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.